Today, I received a very thoughtful question from a subscriber named Kyle. I want to read his question to you and then I want to give you five critical reasons why that question was so very important. Let's go. So here's Kyle's question. Mike, I believe in this video you mentioned something very interesting to me. You talked about not setting a timetable for the exam. I wonder if you could expand on that thought. I have set timetables for the exam but had to push them back for work and family issues. So I'm hoping you can expand on setting the time frame but not putting undue pressure on yourself. Now this is an excellent and important question that you should be asking yourself. What time frame, either daily, weekly, or monthly should I be setting? Setting to achieve my goal of passing the part 107 exam. I'm going to give you a very profound quote that falls in line with this video and that quote is, if you do not set a time frame for anything, then whatever it is that you're trying to achieve or accomplish will not actually be a goal, it will be a wish or a dream. In your head, you must have a time frame set for when it is that you're going to be taking the part 107 exam, but that time frame that you already set in your head before you started studying for the exam cannot be either unreasonable or unrealistic. Just because Joe knows that he can pass the exam by only studying for two weeks does not mean that Jane can do the same thing. We all acquire knowledge and retain information differently and at different time rates. So it's logical to assume that the date that you're setting to take the exam may not be logically reasonable or realistic. In the video when I mentioned not setting a rigid time frame on the exam. What I meant was that it is better to focus fully on understanding the material first before you schedule a test date. And when I say understand the material, I don't mean what you think you understand. I'm referring to what the exam will think you understand. And keep in mind that these are very profound analogies and examples that go way beyond you trying to pass a part 107 exam. This is about the most important question that you need to to ask yourself before you schedule the exam and that question is, are you ready? A simple but very important question that no one else will ask you and probably you may never even ask yourself. These analogies that I'm giving you, these profound thoughts are what will allow you to achieve a level of success in anything that you do in life or in regard to any other test that you are attempting to take. So I'm now going to answer Kyle's question and also his underlying question of the timeline that's needed in order to reduce stress while you are studying for the exam with all of the other obligations that you have and also being able to establish an appropriate test date for the part 107 exam. And believe it or not, this is a very popular question. So I'm going to give you five examples of what it is that you need to do to alleviate this question that you have in your head. Number one, create a realistic study schedule. Now you're not going to be able to do this until you actually look over all of the things that you think you need to be studying for and then develop some sort of time blocking where you can now designate either 30 minutes or an hour, which will be considered as being your time only. Think of this as being something similar to a doctor's appointment. And if you miss that appointment or if someone distracts you enough to make you miss that appointment, then you're going to have to wait until next month until you can reschedule, right? Don't want to do that. Take it from me. Your time is more valuable to you than it is for anyone else. And to give you an idea of what I did, well, I just had to get up one hour earlier so that way I'd be able to have quiet time and private time in order to study effectively. And if you're not a morning person, then block some time during lunch. And if that's not appropriate, then you'll have to turn into a night owl and just have some late night study time. Now, before I jump to number two, the most important thing here is that you prioritize your tasks. You want to get as much information and be as effective as possible and productive as possible when you're studying during that either 30 minutes or one hour worth of time. So don't waste any of your time on topics that are either unimportant or really don't have any relevance to the test that you're about to take. 
Number two, leveraging your downtime wisely. Now, let me explain this. When you're on the go, when you're working, when you're traveling, when you're commuting back and forth, you're also carrying a very powerful and important tool. And that tool is your smartphone, your earbuds. The car that you're driving in has a media player in it. It's built in. You have audio. You'll be able to listen to audio while you're having your downtime traveling back and forth commuting. And it's almost as if you're learning without making any effort to study. This is very effective because the audio that you're listening to in your ear privately doesn't affect anyone else and the learning process then becomes much more expeditious because you're learning at twice the rate than you would have if you weren't listening to it by using your smartphone when it's time to leverage the downtime wisely. Study on the go is what we say. Use your travel time wisely. You commute. You're sitting in a doctor's office waiting for your appointment, listen to audio materials like podcasts or recorded lectures, or listen to mic sites on your smartphone using your little earbuds. These sporadic intermittent learning sessions are actually healthy for you. It's sort of like if you have a plate of food. Well, you wouldn't want to gorge the entire plate of food all at once, right? You would take little portions, little portions, little portions at a time, so that way your digestive system has enough time to absorb the nutrients properly. Now, the nutrition that you're getting in regard to learning has to do with the information and everyone knows that if you get too much information in your brain all at once then you're going to overload you're going to burn out and the problem with this is that most people can only retain 25 to 50 percent of what they actually learn in short-term cognitive memory so trying to learn too much in just a short period of time is only going to stress you out. Study in short-term intervals when you're relaxed and you have some downtime, and you will see that you'll be able to retain much more information than when you were trying to gorge all of that food off of that big giant plate. Number three, get your family involved. Your family understands that if there is something that is important to you, then more than likely it's going to be important to them. When you have your family support you on anything that you're trying to do it will always be less stressful it will always have greater potential it will always be something that's more acceptable and it will always be something that is easier to do your family and the people who truly accept you will understand the importance of this exam and their efforts will be contributing towards the achievement of your goal which may be to learn just enough so you can pass the exam or to learn as much as you possibly can can so you can get a 100% score on that exam. And since I just mentioned about a high score, before I move to number three, let me give you one more. If you aim high, more than likely you'll reach the sky. But if you aim low, then there's no telling where you'll go. The high scores that I see on the comments on this channel, 90%, 93%, 95%, those scores did not get that high because they were aiming low. They went in with all guns blazing. But no matter what score you get on the exam, a 70% or better is a passing grade. And just as Vin Diesel said on the movie Fast and the Furious, it don't matter if you win by an inch or a mile. Winning's winning. And you know what? That's probably the smartest thing that that man ever said. Now let's move on to number four. That is to stay organized and set small goals. Now you're going to have an extremely difficult time. You're going to feel overwhelmed if you don't break things down. Did you ever notice in all of my videos that I take the most complicated topics and break them down into simplistic terms? And all this time you thought it was because I was trying to make you understand it, right? No. It's because I'm trying to understand it while I'm teaching it to you. You cannot learn a complicated topic until you break it down in the same way as teaching. You cannot teach a complicated topic until you break it down first. When I'm referring to your particular study plan, what you'll need to do is to break your study plan down into small manageable tasks. For example, if you're reading a book that has 12 chapters, well, don't you think it's better to read one chapter at a time and then go through the points of that one chapter so you fully understand everything within that chapter before you move to chapter two? I know that some of you watch all 12 of my videos without even stopping from chapter to chapter to take notes, to study, to research. And this is not your fault because even though all of us have been a part of the educational system, the educational system basically taught us the information, but they never taught us how to study the information. 
When you're developing your study plan for this exam, you want to break down all of the information into small manageable tasks. That way you won't feel overloaded and you'll be able to understand each and every section before you move to the next chapter. And by saying that, I'm going to move to number five, which is to maintain a healthy balance. Now this, out of everything that I just mentioned so far, is probably the most important thing. Self-care, remembering to get enough rest, to eat well, to exercise regularly, not to overwork yourself. You have to understand that your physical attributes are in direct correlation and are connected to how you will be able to retain information, how you will be able to focus, how you will be able to learn a topic that you have never learned before. Even taking a 10 minute break, a 10 minute walk, a meditation break, something to refresh you, to refresh your mind, to improve your focus is beneficial for you. This is not an easy test. I have been told that 60 to 70% of the people who take this exam will fail on the first attempt. You're going to need as much ammunition as you can get so you go in with all guns blazing. Maintaining a healthy attitude, a healthy lifestyle, and a healthy physical condition is part of this strategy. And when you have all of these things that I've just mentioned incorporated into the learning process, then it doesn't feel stressful. It feels as if you're having fun doing it. You'll be more effective at learning if your heart, body, and mind are placed into a healthy, fun learning environment rather than placing all three of those into the emergency room at a hospital. So maintain a healthy lifestyle. Those are the five topics that I wanted to break down to you in this video. But the most important topic, the one most important question that you must ask yourself before you schedule for the FAA Part 107 exam is, are you ready? And if you can't answer that question without hesitation, without any residual contradiction, without knowing in your heart, body, and mind that you can go into that exam and pass with a 100% score, then you need to keep asking that most important question over and over and over again until you get the results that you need to get. The answer to that one question should be, yes, I am ready to take this exam. And that is when you schedule your appointment. That's all I've got for you in this video. Kyle, thank you for asking that question. All of you who have been posting the comments on your test scores, keep doing it. That's the way I can gauge these results. And I will keep putting up more videos. Until then, I'll see you all on the next video.